Good afternoon Floss Tube. It's Caroline here from Caroline's Corner in Leeds in the UK. It is Sunday the 4th of September and I am back for Floss Tube number 25. Um, I'm sorry it's taken so long to record a new video. I had every intention of coming back at the end of July when um, I broke up for the summer. However, I was having some health issues with a trapped nerve in my shoulder, which I've taken most of the summer to um, work out. And that just that meant I wasn't really in the mood. Um, as I found out when I was pre prepping for this video, I've done a phenomenally, <laughs> I've worked on a lot of stuff, not a huge amounts of progress because issues with my it was my right hand so it's still a bit funny but regular trips to the osteopath and we're getting there um summer seems to have gone in a flash i'm back to work after the holidays tomorrow the kids go back to school on tuesday and then it's the rush up to christmas so so that's what's been going on here. So I'd like to welcome everyone who's a, if you're new here, please do hang around. Please like and subscribe. I like comments. I'm not always the best at replying, but I do try. Um, if you're a returning viewer, thank you very much for coming back. You can find me around the internet, mostly on Instagram as at Caroline A. Kemp and Caroline is spelt with a K. I, am, I have also got the same tag on Twitter, but I don't tweet that much anymore. Um, the show notes for this episode will be on my blog, which is carolinescorner.blogspot.com and I will put a link in the box below. So, given this is going to be a long one because it's got it's got a couple of months worth of stitching and I have a lot to show, I'm just going to crack straight on into the cross stitch and then we'll see how we go. Um, so, I'm going to start with some finish, fully finished objects. I have actually fully finished two things. I'm slipping a little on my goal of finishing something every month because I've not finished my August finish yet. Um, that's because with being off work, I was attempting to finish up one of the old class, a class project with by CA Wells that I've had, I'd finished a stitching in 10 years ago. I started it in 2008 and I think I took the class in 2009. So so, or maybe even 2008. Um, so yeah, so that's that's why I don't have an August finish to show you. It's, it's, it's progressing, it's just I've got to take it slowly because I need to make sense of CA's instructions. So I will get that done and we'll get September's, probably leave the class piece and do a bit of September's and then go back to the class piece. However, my finish for June was this one, a nice little piece. It's by Jackie Duplassis of It's Finally Finished. It was a little gift she gave us at, no, oh no, I bought this one. I bought this one at a class I took with her. It's called Poppy Pouch and it's just a little bit of banding, a little bit of stitching and you sew it up into a drawstring bag. Um, I finished with the stitching in 2020 um, and I was away on retreat with some, f on a little retreat that myself and some friends do in Staffordshire and that was the piece I took and got finished. Very pleased to have got that one done. It's a lovely little piece. Poppy Pouch by Jackie Duplessis. Then as July was going to be busy, 
I took a piece in for framing and the piece I took in for framing was Moon Garden by Blackbird Designs which if you've been watching my videos you'll know I finished the stitching at the back end of last year. So this was stitched using all the called for threads on a piece of legacy linen Sienna Knight that came out of a very deep stash as did the chart to be perfectly frank because I bought it when it came out and I hadn't stitched it so that was um Yes, I'm very, very pleased. Expertly framed by Pomfret Gallery in Pontefract, who do my framing, and I am very, very pleased with how it's come out. Um, it took a while to find the frame. It's just gone for a stained wooden moulding that I felt brought out the colours in the fabric and the colours in the thread colours, and I'd say very pleased with it. It's We've got to find somewhere permanent to live yet but we're in the process of doing some redecoration so it'll go up once that's all done so yeah so that was my piece for July and like I say haven't quite finished my August piece yet so those are the fully finished objects I actually have some finishes um for, that I got done. So the first piece was a is a start and finish. Actually the first two pieces are starts and finishes. Um, when I went away with my friends on retreat I took a little spot sampler by the drawn thread to work on. It was the retreat was over the drawn thread weekend sal on Instagram. Um, hashtag DT no, it's hashtag, the hashtag is TDT Weekend Sal. I think it's run by Jersey Girl Stitches. Started it. So I took this piece in the hope that I could get it finished while I was there. Um, it's an older drawn thread. I'm not sure what the um, 1994 is the, um, is the copyright date on that one. And here is my finish. I stitched this on some 36 count cream and sugar from Fibre on a Whim that I bought from Patchwork Rabbit. Just, oh, was it Pat? No, Peakside Needleworks, just to see how, what the colour was like. Uh, it's one I like, so if I can, I will get some more because I think it'll be a good sampler fabric. And it uses all the call for DMC threads. There's a couple of embellishments to go on, which I'll put on when I finish it. There's a brass heart and a little star bead to go on. So I'm very pleased with how that came out. I'm very pleased to have got it finished at the retreat. So I start and a finish in June drawn thread little spot sampler. Not quite sure how we will finish it yet. Maybe a pillow, it may be a um, flat fold. I don't I don't know. We'll see if what inspiration strikes when I get there. The next finish was my new start in July. I don't have a chart picture for this one because it is just Nan's My Fair Ladybug and it was one that came on the pink card so you just got the graph. Again this was a start and, start and finish, we were away. We actually had the novelty of having both children away at Guide and Scout Camp at the same time. So as we don't expect that will ever happen again my husband and I took advantage and went away for a long weekend and we went to Liverpool. So this was the piece I took with me and got most of the stitching done and then did the beading when I got home. So this is stitched on some 28 count light grey Jobelin, again from Deep Stash, um, using all the call for DMC and Krynek 
and the beads came, came in the pack that I came in a little charm pack with the charm for, that um, I bought that, that came with the chart from whoever I bought it from because I've had these charts for the best part of 20 years um, again one from the mid 90s but it's beautiful and I'm very glad to have got it done that will probably most certainly be a little pillow at some point not too distant future hopefully I think that might be my September finish but we'll see and then uh, my last finish was the piece I took away on holiday with us in August this last month uh, Sunflower Summer by Shepherd's Bush I started this back in 2020 and just made a little start on the pudgy and one of the sunflowers this one wants some card and then just motored through the rest of the stitching while we're on holiday and then I just put the embellish a few little beads and embellishments on there that I put on when I came home Again, another chart from the early 90s, mid 90s, you can tell from the colours that that pink and that blue are very 1990s. Um, I love stitching, I love these little charts on Shepherd's Bush um, and I've had it in my stash for a long time so it's quite nice. So this is the third one in the season series that I've finished. I have, I finished spring, I finished autumn last year and one of my starts for September will be winter, woolly winter, so I'll have the set. So yeah, so I'm very pleased to get that completely stitched in a tent on holiday. So that was that. So that's, and say so that one off the whip pile. So that was, that, they were my finishes, very pleased to have had I finish a month for the last three months it's not going to carry on not in September there's too much else I'm wanting to stitch on um, I might get a finish in September actually we'll see probably not um, so we're on, on to whips the one whip I've got so I'm, I'm getting close-ish to a finish on my focus whip which if you remember is the Ackworth Whitework sampler which was a class that Ava Lotta Hansen taught us at the 2008 Aquith Sampler Gathering, um, organised by ne Jackie Holsworth of Needle Print Designs. Um, and if you remember, I don't know how well this will show up with it being white on white card, but we'll see. I was working on all this pulled thread work. And it is in the shape of an acorn. How well that shows up, I don't know. I may have to take a photo with it on a darker background and then insert it sort of here. Um, so since you last saw it, I've got all the dove's eyes done and the um, reweaving and I moved on to this satin stitch border at the bottom. Now this border at the bottom half of it should be in detached buttonhole um, which is what it is on the original sampler that she's taken that she took that particular motif of. Um, I should say that all the motifs on this sampler Ava took bits from samplers in the Goodhart collection this this the 2008 gathering was to launch the Goodhart sampler book um, and then put them together to make this white work sampler um, but I decided because I want to get it finished in a reasonable time frame I just do the bottom border in satin, satin stitch it's not a true reproduction it's just elements from three or four different samplers so um, I decided that was what I was going to do. So I've got most of the satin stitch in. There is some more drawn thread, pulled thread, drawn cut work in the border to do, and some little acorns to 
cross stitch acorns to go in the corners and then it will be finished. Very much doubt I'll finish it in September, but it will get worked on for some for September. Um, as I say, it's my focus because it's one of my oldest whip now. Um, but maybe October, if I get the pull thread work done in September, we'll see. We'll see how much stitching time I get because I say I'm going back to work and life will get and the kids will start running around of needing ferrying. Mum's taxi service for the evening stuff is going to kick off again. And as they're getting older, it's all getting later and later and later into the evening. So I don't get as much stitching time done, but we'll see. So anyway, very pleased to have finished the pull thread acorn and to have moved on to the next bit of that one. Um, so, excuse me, I just need to blow my nose. I'll just pause you now. Right, I'm back having done with them. Right, so whips I worked on in June. June. So the first whip I worked on in June was one I started June 2020, which was a sample of grows by the Scarlet House. Um, I'm stitching this on a piece of bit of 40 count lakeside linen that was left over from stitching Dorothy Walpole. And I used the call for colours where I had them. Where I didn't, I used the DMC to pull other silks from my stash. Um, so it's all getting stitched in silk and this is where I am. I think when I picked it up, I just had the main board bit of the house. So I've put in the windows, started the fill in and done the dormer on the end. So a nice little bit of progress on that one. And continuing with my goal of touching all my whips this year, which I, I'm on track to do. I may do something different next year just because I want to see a bit more progress on some of them. So yeah, so all getting stitched in a mix of needle point ink and a vera soir. The Original design is chartered for needle pointing silk. So where I, as I said, where I have the silk, I'm using it. Where I don't, I use the DMC conversion to match, to get a good match to something else I already had in my stash. Because I've got a reasonable selection that I've had for year, donkey's years of a various well, and needle pointing silk. So that's that. Um, however, in the next whip I'm going to show you is also from June. I didn't get very far with this one. This is Birds of a Feather by Brenda Gervais. It was originally released in three parts after market. Uh, it's no, it's not available anymore, possibly available in the secondary market. Uh, I'm using the call for colours of um, Weeks Dye Works on the call for fabric, which is Weeks Dye Works Grey. Um, I had a bit of the border in and then I started stitching this red flower because I started with this flower here I put some border in and then I started on this red flower this this time round and then discovered I had miscounted in this flower so uh, the border I put in was in the wrong place so I had to start frogging back I still need to frog the this bit so I'll have to get to that at some point which is a real shame because I really like this piece and was so looking forward to making some progress but hey seems to be this 
I seem to be one step forward, three steps back a lot with a lot of the pieces I'm working on. Um, my ability to count appears to have gone right out the window of late. So, on some things. So yeah, but better I find it, find the mistake now when there's not a lot there and can. It's not a massive job to frog it than finding it later on. So yeah, I'm loving the red though in this flower. I just need to uh, go on and frog some more. But yeah, so tiny little bit on birds of a feather. Mm -hmm. This one was started June 2021, so it's not had, it's only had a little bit of work on it of late. After I'd worked on Birds of a Feather, I picked up and many more by Just Nan. This is a exclusive that she did for the Silver Needle. She'd done a piece for the 20th anniversary, which was a scissor keep and fob, which I stitched a while ago and have actually finished. Um, I think about 2015. Um, it was to, to celebrate Silver Needle's 20th anniversary. Um, again, this has been out for a long time and it's out of print. Um, it was exclusive to the Silver Needle. Um, it uses Splendor Silks and one, uh, one Thread Gatherer. It's actually got work, so it got works on in June. It also got a bit of work on it in last, while I was away, because again, this was one I took with me to work on on holiday because I could see it without needing my magnifying lamp. Um, and I, since you last saw it, I have, I think, finished all the, the white um, fence and I've put in all these um, flowers around the fence. Um, so almost finished. There's not that much more to do on that one. There's a little birdhouse to put in and a little cartouche that goes under the flap and some back stitching and then that one will be done looking forward to so moving along quite nicely on that one and looking forward to getting some more more tarling so there's a downside of having touched on my whips i now know um i've reminded i've reminded myself how great they all are and i want to stitch on all of them at once Right, so my class project in June, um, as you know, I'm working on, I'm pulling out one, I'm doing a weekend or a few days on each, on one of my old class projects every month, was Glastonbury Garden by Forget Me Nots and Stitches. Didn't get a huge amount of that one done. I was working on one of the in pockets that goes on the inside. Um, I was really just putting in some of these um, leaves. I think that was about all I got done. I think I'd done the flowers. Um, or had I? I to put them through. Can't remember. But it's moving forward. Um, I'd really like. I haven't got that much more to do. I've just got the inside pockets to finish on that one because I have stitched the outside. It's the sewing case. I've stitched the outside. That's the outside, that's the inside. This The tacking is where all the um, the um, pockets go. Sorry, I just noticed some discoloration on my linen, so I'm going to have to have a look at that. Um, so yeah, and I've a few more pockets, so it just needs a bit more, we have a bit more headspace and thinking time for that one. So, that's being stitched 
in sampler threads. And the last um, I think the last whip I worked on in June, maybe the beginning of July, was Summer Bird by Heart in Hand. This was another one I start I start this beginning of 2021 and I hadn't got very much done, just a little bit of the bird. Um, and I have finished quite a bit more and it's all been crumpled of the bird I think I've just got a bit of the body done so I finished the legs finished the head finished the tail made a start so nice to have got that one a bit forward that is pretty much the colorful colors I think I've substituted the red I think I substituted I think it called for brick and I didn't have that one um, I didn't have a skein, so I substituted red current because and the rest of the call for gentle arts. Again, when I get back to that one, that white take a lot of stitching. Then we get into July, and that's when it all went a bit pear shaped with my shoulder trapped nerve in my shoulder and my hand, and I couldn't really stitch in hands, so my rotation kind of went out the window. But while I was, so I picked up Milk Paint Sampler Threadfold to work on, but didn't manage to get very much done because my hand did not like me, did not like stitching in hand. And it didn't like me stitching at all at one point. Um, so I, on this one, I've already done this bit. I was on the grass, I'm on panel two. So I finished the grass, did a bit of the house, and then I had to put this one down because it just it just wasn't doing it for me. This has been, this was a thread kit that Krynik released to promote their um, milk paint silks. The series was called Remember the Ladies. And this particular design is by Mary Gary's Sewing Cabin. Again, one from the early 2000s. I've had it in my stash for years. So I think I picked it up on a trip to the States in the early 2000s. So it will date from then. The, the fabric, I can't remember. It's, it's an off-cut from something else, again, that I had in my, had in my stash. So, so yeah, so stitching was a bit, uh, a bit difficult for a while. Thankfully, I've got a Lowry stand. So what, what I ended up doing was having to stitch with my left hand on the Lowry, which obviously doesn't make for great progress on staff. So anything that I could, that was stitching in a Q-snap or that I pulled out. One of the whips I pulled out to work on was Hannah Coates because I figured it's just the border. That's, it's going to be nice and straightforward. I'm not going to have to think too much, you know, just keep the routine going because I'm just, just doing the border vine on Hannah at the minute. I'm using the colourful DMCs on this. Um, and I did get the board done and then found it was three stitches out. So again, I need to do some frogging. Let's roll it up. There we go. So it's being stitched on 40 count um, vintage mocha from Zweigart. So it's three stitches out at that corner. I've identified a counting error up here on this board, side border. So I need to frog back and then check my counting on this side and then see where, we're, where we are. So yeah, 
uh, to be honest, I don't think my state of mind with my shoulder was helping my accuracy when it came to counting. So I was a little bit disappointed on that one, but hey ho. So that was another one that was one step forward, several steps back. On to my class project for July, which was worked on a couple of weeks later when my arm was starting to feel a bit better, so I got a slightly further forward. This is Fruits of the Vine Sample Hussif, a class I took with Elaine Chester at Fobbles, 2011 maybe. Um, I love this, it's all mostly stitched in dinky dyes. There was some thread gatherer or Gloriana in there. Um, beautiful colours. I'm working on the outside of the Hussif. And when I picked it up this time, I've finish the vine down this side. This is this is to the end of the first page. I've got surrounding for the interior sampler, made a start on the vine and on the other side. So actually on this one I was actually making reasonably good progress so it was really nice to actually start getting somewhere a bit with some piece. I was quite disappointed to put this one away. I'm looking forward to getting back to working on it some more. I really own, I've got the outside of the Hussif to stitch and the pin cushion that goes in it because I've stitched the other bits that of, so there's a needle roll. That was the piece we did in the class to demonstrate all the techniques. So that's done. And the inside of the needle roll, and the little scissor fob. And so this was a class, so it's being stitched with all the class materials that Ellen um, supplied for us. So another whip I worked on when I couldn't, that I, because I could only work on stuff that was um, on my frame, was Skylar Wayne, which I pulled out because that's one of another, it's the oldest, I have five, six whips left from 2019. This was the oldest one, so I started this mania 2019. It's being, st a, a Stitching pen pals, but provided he did it up for me, so I'm stitching it with the call for Karen threads. I think on the call for fabric. And here is my progress to date. I was working on getting some of these trees in, and filling and finishing this grid. So. I'm actually hoping to get this out again for sample September and I'll probably try and get a few more of the trees done because they're quite intense. They take a bit of doing around the border. I don't want to leave them all to the end. So I'm very pleased with my progress on that one, really. Um, I think I'd only got that one in, so I did two up this side. So nice to get that done. I do like working on that one, it's lovely. I do love Catherine's designs, Catherine Strickler, who was the designer of Indigo Rose. Unfortunately, she's retired now, but fortunately I've got plenty of her charts to be getting on with. I've actually only stitched one of her samplers, which was um, Valentine's one. I can't remember the name of it. Now, I do have shown it on a previous video, so you have to go go back and have a look and then 
I also worked on Sampler Cove's Quaker Husif, which I started, I think, March 2020, or was it 21? Maybe 21. Um, I'm st stitching this in the call for materials because I had a piece of the 36 count um, navy bean love by lake side that it called for and it uses Gloriana um, rosewood. Now I had already had a skein of rosewood but I wasn't sure I'd have enough so I got another one but it's quite a different colour so what I'm doing is using my original for the outside and any borders and the Quaker motifs are getting stitched in the new one. I made a nice little bit of progress on that one. Nice repetitive stitching and again didn't require a huge amount of counting or thinking about. Um, so when I picked it up I just had a bit of the border at the top so I've done a load more on the borders and made a start on the first of the medallion medallions at the top of the design so really enjoy stitching on that one that was nice so you can see the difference in the colors so uh, yeah but I think that will work the way I'm doing it so yeah so that's sample cave quick cursive Um, in August for Blackbird, um, the Blackbird weekend sell, which I'm, it's me and a few others are still carrying on, I know Brenda and Laura have moved on. Um, I'm working on Clara Ellen, as I've said, I'm working on, and we're doing this one because my great grandmother's name was Clara Ellen. I'm not planning on doing any of the other anniversaries of the heart this was part of that series i'm using the called for threads mostly crescent colors i actually realized i didn't have one of the crescent colors so, but that's just because it was only used in a few, few for the windows in the house so i've substituted in the dmc because it didn't matter for that bit And this is my progress. I'm actually working on this at the moment because it is the first weekend in September and I want to get this finished this year. So since you last saw it, I finished the house. I've put that tree in. I've done some more doodads down here and put the bird in. I've also charted my personalisation. So my great grandmother's date of death I put down the side of the house and put instead of the chart says dear sister I am just putting in I'm putting her sonar and maiden name in here which was Walkington um, so it won't quite fit so I'll just sort of make it work and then I've just got the big vine to do and her date of birth goes in the urn that the vine comes out of so I'm very confident that I will actually finish that finish this this month uh not this month this year it is on some 28 count linen from deep stash that wasn't labeled so i'm not sure what 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 it was but it just worked when i did the top floss toss so that's clara ellen and i have only one last actual whip and then we'll get on to new starts so for the Draw and Thread weekend sale in August, I worked on an open heart. Um, so I've had this kit in my stash since the chart came out in the early 2000s. So um, a friend bought me the kit. It's got the recommended MPIs. And I'm not sure what the linen is. I think it might be elegant bean, but I'm not entirely sure. So this is my progress so far on this one. 
So last time I picked it up, I worked on this heart and got a bit more of the cream in. Finished, so I finished that off. I um, don't remember where it was where you last saw it, but I finished this row and got the next white work band, bands in and the next line of the verse. So it's looking very pretty. And that will come out again in September as well. And hopefully make a little bit more progress next weekend on it. Do like working on it. I do love Drawn Thread was my first love when it came to samplers. And so it's lovely to get back to some of her stitching some of her stuff. Right, that was all the whips I worked on. We're on to the new starts, finally. <laughs> Told you I got through a fair bit during July and August. So my first new, my final new start for June was Harvest Moon by Shepherd's Bush. This was one of the first sampler kits I have ever I ever bought and it's been sat in my stash for the best again, best part of twenty years. So I thought it was time it came out and got worked on. It's stitched in AVA of wear a soir silk. Um I think there's one pearl cotton there. And this was my start. On the moon at the top so quite pleased with where I got to um, again this was when my arm was starting to play out really badly so um, it was hard work but a bit of nice easy just plain cross stitch was definitely what was called for so very happy with the start on that one and um, look forward to getting back to it at some point In July, I started a new piece for the Blackbird Sampler Weekend, which was the Christmas Garden. I'm starting the big sampler. I am using the called for threads. It's a mix of classic colour work and gentle art. And I'm stitching it on a piece of Zweigart. 40, 40 count Zweigart. And the colourway was just described as neutral when I bought the fabric. It's actually sort of a sort of a very pale natural linen. Uh, the Viking loom, which is probably my nearest proper LNS, um, it's the just the other side of York. It's having a little bit of a, had an online sale for some of their 40 count fabric. So I got a full metre of this because I figured it was going to be so useful for um, samplers. It's a slightly flecked, yeah, so it's, it's slightly lighter than natural linen, but I can say just a good, good solid neutral. You can see that. Um, yeah, so that was one of my stash purchases, was a full metre of this um, this 40 can linen. So yeah, so I got a bit of progress in on the border on the weekend. And so this is when I was having to seriously stitch one-handed. Um, so progress was naturally slow. But I'm pleased to have started that and I'm quite pleased with how much I got done in the weekend, really, all things being equal, given I was, say, stitching with my left hand. My other new start in July was Hands Across the Seas, Rosa Ada Featherstone. Now, this was an exclusive last year with Hobby House Needleworks, I was lucky enough to get 
get I bought the kit from them so that was all the call their color con their conversion and into on over dyed cottons and the fabric it was 40 count antique lace I think that's seraphim and I made a fair start on the border. Someone observed I my two new starts. I mostly worked on the same sort of border. I'm almost all the way across the across the top. I've got too far to go, so I'm quite pleased with that. Finding the Valdini th cotton thread a bit of a pain. Um, I've got to have very very short lengths, and it still still find it snags on me and breaks a lot. So but, yeah, so that's my little start on. Rosa Ada Featherstone. I would probably have enjoyed working on them more had I not been in so much pain with my shoulder, to be fair. Um, so I am looking forward to getting back to that one and getting back to some of the more colourful bits. She is a very colourful, bright and colourful girl when I get there. Then in August for my class piece, I worked on a companion piece to Anniversary Roses, which was the big sample I finished at the end of last year by Forget-Me-Nots in Stitches. She designed this little scissor fob to go with the sampler. So I made a start on that one. So I've got it outlined and I made a start on stitching the roses. So I was back to being able to stitch in hand a little bit on that one. So this is just in some sampler threads that Lauren supplied with the kit. This was a gift she gave us, I think. I might have had to purchase the kit, but um, at the class. And then on to my last finish for August. Um, I purchased the kit for a petit sampling etui when it came out in, I can't remember, oh, I might have bought it in 2009. I know I bought it from Hanging by a Thread. I know she sold out of the finishing kits at that point, so I don't have the finishing material, but I'd got the kit to stitch it. And again, this has been sitting in my stash since then, so I thought it was time to get on with it. It is being stitched, so it's all in the call for so long ago. They are crescent colours, not classic colourways. It's also another little bit of stash here. I treated myself to a mini McBean's floss ring, stroke scissor fob. This has got one of the parts from, I think it's the Mrs. Campbell, perhaps across the sea sampler. Or is it Mary Wigglesworth? I'm not entirely sure very pretty very very pretty mini McBeans um, I didn't get as far as I thought I had I hoped to because again to do a load of frogging um, so I'm working on the first panel which is by a pair, this this was a collaboration by Cherish Stitches Praiseworthy Stitches the stitching parlor and with my needle so the first panel that I'm working on is this one up here and it is by Praiseworthy Stitches um, and like I say I had got further along I'm working I started on the over one in, in the middle so I I basted my fabric so I knew my sizes of my panels that I was working with and I had got the cartouche in and then realized I had miscounted the cart and I preferred to frog the cartouche than the over one verse so that's all I have back in um, and it'd be nice to get back to that at some point soonish we will see but yeah so that's my small start on a petite sampling etwin Um, 
as I previously mentioned, I bought some fabric. I also bought a couple more pieces of fibre on a whim, um, which I can't get at at the moment. Well, one is kitted up, and you will see that in my next video because it, I'm going to. It's for I was trying to find the right fabric to stitch Mary Betchel by the Scarlet House on. So I've had a couple of goes at buying fabric for that, and they've it's not worked out. So. Um, but I have, so mostly I've bought for 40 and 36 count fabric over the last couple of months. But because of the, the redecoration work, I can't actually get into the cupboard that they're stored in, apart from the one, the Ava, 40 cat Africa Gardo, which I decided was, I was actually going to use for Mary Batchel. That's right. So the only other things I bought were couple of charts. I got Helen Murray by Needle Made Designs because I liked that when it first came out at summer school. The Attic, I think this was last year or the year before. Um, so I have, yeah, I've got that one. And I bought upon street samplers a thousand hills because I have liked that one for some time and been meaning to buy it for some time. So that was the only chart stash I bought. Um, as we go later on into the video, you will see I have bought quite a bit of quilting fabric as well. So, right. So I'm going to pause the video here because we. I need to move all the cross stitch stuff away so we can talk about knitting and quilting and I will be back. Right, I'm back. I've sorted out all my knitting and quilting stuff to show you. So we'll start with knitting. Um, now knitting did get put on the back burner um, while my hand was really bad um, because while I was still at work and having to use a mouse a lot I just I wanted to just focus on being able to stitch if I could um, so I really did put my knitting down for a good chunk of um, July but I did I have still managed to finish a piece this summer um, I finished the twig and bud shawl which was by um, and Captain Beg, Marna Gilligan. Um, this is a kit I bought off Marna. So um, that was her. This was her spring shawl. She's been doing one for every season. So this is Twig and Bud. It's a beautiful shawl. I'm really pleased with how it's come out. Um, I wasn't entirely sure about the mix of the silk and the mole hair but I think it's actually worked really good. Well, um, these are using Mana's own yarn. So there is a cutting silk, which is 100% mulberry silk and cutting fluff, which is kid mole hair and silk. And they're both in the through the fog colorway, which she did as a, for the kit. So it's a beautiful, delicate shawl. But boy, doing that lace knitting in the mole hair. Um, I was actually knitting on that when it was about 40 degrees outside um, when we've had the really hot weather. And that was hard work when you got sweaty hands and knitting in mole hair. But got there in the end. So really pleased with how that's come out. We're enjoying wearing that one. So that just left me with one knitting whip, which I got a little bit of progress on the habitation throw, but not a not not a great deal. Can't remember exactly where it was last time you um, you saw it. I think I've just got one more colour row in. I suspect, I think I was on this one. I put the Progress Keeper where I was last time I showed you it. 
and I'm getting another row of grey in. So I got it another row of grey in. I mostly knit on this when I was away on my um, retreat because it was nice easy knitting. And I haven't knit on that since June, just like I say, because I've not been. Um, not really, I didn't really knit much in July at all, other than doing an occasional row. Um, it's sort of um, back in, I didn't really pick up my knitting till, again till I broke up for the summer. So, so there's been a bit of progress on that. It probably won't. And, Probably won't work on that before my next video, but we shall see. We shall see how it goes. So I have a couple of new knitting starts. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to get twig and bud finished was I wanted to work on the, I bought the mystery shawl from Helen Stewart, Curious Handmade, because I love her shawls, as you all know, because I've knit so many of them. Um, this is the Miss May Mystery Shawl, because by the time I come to knit it, it's no longer a mystery, which is fine by me. I'm, I don't have to keep up. Um, so, once Twig and Bud was finished, which I think I finished towards the end of July, I'm... Mo I've spent August working on my Miss May mystery. So, up at the end of the pink was the end of clue one. I am now working on clue two. So this, these are all my colours. If you remember, I bought, I think in my last video, I showed you these two. They, I bought them in the Lake District and these two come from Stash. So the colours are, my colour one is Pendulum by Zakimi Designs. They're Scottish, this is a uh, hand dyed merino. My colour two is also by Zuki, Zakami Designs, and that's called Norton. Again, 100% Merino. My colour three is by Fondant Fibres. This is some I've had in my stash for several years, and is a Merino Mulberry Silk in the colourway Love Me Tender. And the final, the variegated colour is from Meadow Yarn and it's their Coombs Fingering, which again is a merino. Um, and it's, they've been doing some limited edition colours this year called A Hat Full of Sea. And um, this is New Gale in their... Um, based on photographs that they take and just them up. So, really liking how they are working together. So yeah, so I'm about halfway, just maybe coming up to two thirds of the way through clue two on that one. And I'm using a number four zing needle habitation throws on just standard knit pro number four needle then when my husband and i went away to liverpool i cast on a pair of vanilla socks and got the cuff knit because i just wanted something easy to take with me i dug up some this is some opal fresh and juicy it's called i've had in my stash for several years uh five or six seven years maybe um so i'm just doing a plain vanilla sock 
this is going to be my project for September. I decided I'm going to change knitting projects every month so I can see some real progress in them. And I know what September's like at work. I'm going to be completely drained and pretty exhausted because it's always nuts. So a plain vanilla sock should be good. Um, so yeah, so I've got done all this in a week. So hopefully I should be well on the way to finishing a first sock by the time we get to the end of September, if not finish the first sock, but let's not get carried away. Eh? I've just 10 more rows to go before I hit the heel on this one. I right, see these may end up being my daughter's because she's agitating for some, mm -hmm. some more woolen socks. But they may prove to be too pink for her, so we shall see. And they may actually end up in my sock drawer. But yeah, so these are my socks and I say I'm going to be working on them for the duration. And these are on just a miscellane, mishmash of um, 2.5 mil needles, double pointed. I like to, I like double DPNs for socks. I've never got the sock thing going. So, so that's my knitting on to quilting of which because um, using the machine didn't hurt my hands as much. Well, I got a fair bit of quilting done when I was on my retreat. I spent one weekend, one day, one afternoon just quilting and got about three blocks. But yeah, using the machine wasn't hurting my hands as much. So I got a bit more quilting done. So I'm up to quilt clue five on both of my mystery quilts. Last year's mystery quilt, which is Sparkle and Shine. And this is my mystery quilt, which is called So Sweet. So what I'll do is I shall just run through the clues and show you them. So starting with Sparkle and Shine, that's clue five. So four of those blocks. Clue four. One half of clue three. Half of clue three. And I'm doing a small in both of these quilts. One bit of clue two. The other bit of clue two. And the bit I may have already shown you, which is clue one A and one B. Fabrics for this one, I get these through Lisa at the Modern Quilt Club. And the fabrics for this one are a Juicy Juicy fabric and an Andover fabrics. So that's sparkle and shine. So sweet, that's clue five, which is four of these. Clue four, one bit of clue four. Next piece of clue four. First half of clue three, second half of clue three, clue two B, clue two A. And these I think you have seen, which was clue one. It's two, again, two blocks of these. Just check my notes. Uh, make, make a note of who the fabric was by. 
Patty Sloling Solinger for Andover and the fabric line is Flora and Fauna. Now I mentioned in the cross stitch section that I've been buying a fair bit of fabric and he's quilt fabric. Uh, obviously I had to get some of the blackbird, don't we? Always <laughs> buy the blackbird. So I got some of the um, Threads That Bind range from Bev at Fobbles. So on to four metres of those ones. I haven't got it out, but I did get a charm pack. So I have the rest. Um, to find out where I stash that one. I think that will become a project runner if I ever get the time to make project bags that will become project bags. And then when I was on holiday, on our way down to holiday, we stopped off at Caslet Workshops in Cornwall which wasn't too far away from where we were staying and obviously I bought a few bits there. The charm pack of Astra from Moda by Janet Clare because I liked the designs on that. I'm not sure what I'll do with that, but and then I bought a Fat Quarter bundle of also of Janet Clare of uh, more though these are more seaside themed fabrics. But I just like I was just I was in a blue mood. When I went in. And also a bit of a red because I did pick up a fat quarter bundle of French general fabrics as well. But probably more for finishing these ones. And then I'm going to just try some wool applique. I got this little heart kit by Sue Maddox. Um, so I'll have to give that a go probably next year. So that was a whistle stop, stop tour of everything I've done for the last few, um, couple of months, three months almost. Um, sorry it's taking so long. I'm hoping it won't be so long before the next one. I can't guarantee I will get back before October half term, however, because just looking at the calendar for September, it's nuts. Um, and up, to, up till half term, um, it's always nuts at work, so I probably won't get the headspace. But hopefully I'll come back then. I'm going to stick a few pictures on the end of our holidays, um, our trip to Liverpool and our trip to the um, to Cornwall just um Cornish trip was very chilled we did visit one um National Trust property which I'll put in which had some lovely bits of Carolinian embroidery and surface embroidery and stomp work so I shall put those in um but other than that I hope you're all doing well um and I hope I will see you in October Thanks for hanging with me this long and I'll see you then. Bye.